Hi, I'm Rose Wells, 1984. Welcome to my Luca Story Binder Tutorials. This tutorial is a continuation of my writing and planning within Liquid Story Binder tutorials. This is the last part of the getting started portion of my playlist on my YouTube channel. And basically what I want to do for this particular video is answer some frequently asked questions from some of the people who have messaged me about the program in different contexts. There's much to cover in this particular tutorial, so let's go ahead and begin. The very first question that I want to address is an important one and probably one that many people may want to start off with when they're um, customizing their particular work environments within the Liquid Story Binder program. So the first thing that I'm going to address is this particular question from a user. How do I adjust the font size in the planner mode of the program? Which if you look on screen here the text that's inside the planner feature of the program here with respect to the um, description and also the titles and many descriptions that you see in each of these particular items. The first thing that you want to do is go to the display menu and choose display preferences. Here you can s edit certain aspects of your document with respect to the document writing fonts which you can adjust the global font that you see here, you can adjust the revision marking font, and you can also adjust the line notes and the document background color. Let's change this from pink to white really quickly and you can see that adjusts this. Now um, the, fo the um, part of this you want to focus on the most is the additional fonts which are down here and I'm going to show you with respect to how to change the title font which is this font right here like at the very top of each of these particular items and also the description and caption font which is the description is this brief part here and then the caption is this part here so um, let's first uh, adjust the title and basically from the font selection you can choose what um, font you want, what size, what color and any additional enhancements that you want to use in the display. So let's choose Book Antigua, size 14, that looks pretty good. And we can just bold it just to show you what it looks like. After you make all the changes that you need to, go to Select Font. And you can see a preview of it in this particular window. And when you click Finished, it automatically updates like so. I'm going to go back to the display preferences menu and choose the description and caption font and basically what I want to do is we can keep it at book Antigua and we can adjust the size 12 for example and um, we won't do any in, uh, additional enhancements and basically you can go to select font see the preview here and then when you click finished it automatically updates like so. The next question I want to address is one from a particular user who asks, is there a, a way I can create a link to go directly to my project in Liquid Story Binder XE from my desktop? And the answer to that is yes, you can definitely create a shortcut to get to a particular project in your in Liquid Story Binder. First thing you want to do is go to your library and navigate to the file that you want to um, go to. So for example, I'll go to my sample binder, which is what I've used for previous tutorials. And what I want to do is go to the library menu again and choose create desktop shortcut. And it'll ask you to confirm. And once that's created, you can minimize your window and see up here on my desktop where it says sample binder um, I can open that the next time that I can just click on that and open a separate instance of the binder when I restart the program so let's exit out of this just to show you what happens and then when I click on sample binder it'll start up the program like so. 
and it'll automatically take you to the um, particular file that you want. The third question that I have from a user who wanted to know within the particular planner feature was how do I adjust colors for color coding my projects? And this is very easy to do. Um, you could do it in one of two ways. You can either right click on an item and navigate to the color aspect or you can simply go to the content menu, make sure your um, particular item is highlighted and choose color and it'll bring up this color palette here. If you want to create a custom color, you can just click on one of these and then click on the white space down here and then choose from a myriad of different colors and make your own that way. Let's for example choose this kind of teal color. And we can make that a little bit lighter actually. We can say OK. And it automatically shows up here. And you can change and you can change it even here if you want to in terms of um, how you want to display it. And then when you're um, finished, you can say choose select a color and it automatically updates like so. Now if for some reason you want to save that particular color to use in other color coding schemes, let's go back to the color menu. And as you can see where it says custom colors, you can automatically navigate to one of these. Let's go back to the um, change, let's cancel that and go back to it. You can highlight this particular color, make sure it's all right, and then you can a change selected custom color, and it automatically updates um, within your custom colors um, menu, like so. The next question I have deals with shortcuts and resources. Basically, the question is asking, what's the difference between shortcuts and resources? How do I use them? Well, one uh, fundamental difference between a, a shortcut and a resource is, um, well, they basically do the same function, only one of them actually gets um, incorporated within um, your particular binder. If you create a, a resource, a shortcut simply links to that particular file. So in this particular project, I've created a shortcut to one of my um, previous um, Lego Story Binder tutorials. All you would have to do is just go to New Shortcut, and it will prompt um, you to navigate to the folder that you want to find that uh, file. And so basically, once you do that, it'll automatically open. And you can navigate it like so. Whereas with a resource, you can choose any um, particular program or file or what have you to be able to navigate onto it. You would just do the same thing you do with a um, shortcut, only with in a particular resource it will um, associate that particular program with that binder so if you export the binder at any point in time it'll automatically be um, incorporated within the program resource so um, for example I've created a uh, resource for the program Spotify and automatically when I click on it it'll prompt me for my username and password for the Spotify program now some people have asked me what exactly you can use shortcuts and resources for within the Lucas Story Binder program. One thing to keep in mind is that I, whether you use a shortcut or a resource, you can use um, either one of those to link to external sources on the program. The, the difference between shortcuts and uh, resources, as I mentioned before, with um, respect to shortcuts, it just link it just um, provides a link to the file, which is already um, on your desktop or whatever destination file it links to. But resources actually incorporate that particular file within the Look at Story Binder program. So if you have a playlist in Windows Media Player or in iTunes or an iTunes file or a video of some sort, it'll automatically import into the program and you can just access that from um, any particular menu. So for example, when I go to resources, you can see that I have a novel playlist created under Windows Media Player. And when I um, click on that, it automatically opens.
Another question that I got from a particular user was asking me, I just want to start writing my story, no planning, no extra bells and whistles. What would you suggest starting with in the program? And this is actually a, a really easy question for me to answer in terms of what I start with. So, um, but it may di uh, differ for um, different people who just want to um, go ahead and get started with their story. I would first make sure you have a planner with your particular chapters. I would make sure that you have chapter mode. Oh, excuse me. Let's make sure this is in chapter mode. I would make sure that you have a chapter created so that you can go ahead and start typing. And I would also include the view files feature of the program. Let's see if we can open that up as soon as I finish adjusting this. You just go to the files menu and choose view files. Make sure this is all here. And basically I start with this particular environment whenever I'm creating a particular file and I save it as a workspace. So let's save work this current workspace as starter set just for me. Say OK. And that way, if for some reason you accidentally close all of your windows, as per example, you can just go to the workspaces part, navigate to it, and it automatically pulls back up. So basically, um, your starting point, you can start with a table of contents in your planner. You can start with a chapter mode, whether you start with chapter 1 or chapter 2 or, or any of that um, sort of thing, if you don't want to um, really um, do any planning initially and also a file listing um, just to see every file that you create within the program as you create it and you can um, with the view um, files listing the whole thing you can just create um, new diff new um, modes of the program as you would like and that as well if you didn't want to do it through the um, planner feature it's easier for uh, me to create new items. For example, if I were to create a chapter three, let's go to my insert item menu. Oop, not that. I mean, add titles. I should have a chapter three already here. Same max selection. And let's make sure this is in chapter mode of the program, and then I would open it that way and just work to my leisure as I go along. The last question I'm going to address in this particular video is um, from one user who was asking me what's the difference between workspaces and layouts and that is an excellent question because it makes a difference um, within the Liquid Story Binder program. So a workspace is a collective um, grouping of specific files that you save within a particular workspace. For example, in um, in the spectrum that I just showed you, I created a starter set which has my table of contents, my um, chapter one here, and also the file listing. Now if I were to create a layout with respect to the arrangement of the um, windows that you see here, I would just go to the layouts menu, choose save layout, and I'll save this as secondary layout just as, as an example to show you I say OK. What it will do is save the arrangement of the windows of any windows that you particularly open within the program in this um, format. So let's close all of these files as per example and just open some random files. Just to show you as an example, I have a character list. Oh, not that one. I have a character list with my primary characters built within a planner. 
let's say that I have my story bible here and I have let's try to see if I can find another file to use I'll try my chapter one just to see already so you see these particular files let's close off the file listing just to show you so I have three windows here this one this one and this one if I go to layouts and choose secondary layout it'll arrange these items as best um, as it can within that particular layout I'm not exactly sure why this particular file showed up that way but and then the um, story bible like showed up behind that but it'll try to arrange the windows that you have open in that sort of same scheme no matter what type they are let's show another example just to get a better idea let's close all windows open up the view files menu let's try my table of contents and let's try another um, chapter mode and let's see if this actually works a little bit better see secondary layout there we go that's a better example of how it arranges the um, particular windows within the program so you can um, use that uh, for whatever um, particular windows you open go into layouts and then just expect it to um, come as close as it can to arranging the windows in that particular format that's all for this particular tutorial um, in the next um, series of tutorials I'm going to do I'm going to focus mostly on the chapter mode of the program and just go into individual uh, modes of the program in terms of how to use them and how to orient yourself around them um, thanks for watching. I'm RosePels1984, and I'll see you next video.